Recently, in political blogs on Facebook and YouTube, you may have seen part of a panel covered by Book TV cameras on the future of conservative values. Jonah Goldberg, the November guest for our in depth program, moderated the panel of contributors to his book, Proud to Be Right. Here's a portion of the panel. The uh, easiest thing to do for conservatives who only have other conservatives to argue with, argue with each other. Uh, I learned very quickly um, at Yale, where I went, that arguing with a liberal was easily done in that you can throw a rock and hit one, and if you, whatever you say will make him angry. Um, uh, but not terribly interesting or fruitful, um, because of course they're the dominant culture and they are not always uh, especially well informed. So, I mean, I'm a social conservative, I'm a, uh, of a Burkean bent, so I found some libertarians. Um, I think of all the people whose writing I read right now, uh, the person I disagree with most reliably is Will Wilkinson, um, the uh, libertarian. Um, so, no, fusionism, the reason why we have a name for that is that it was very, very hard to get traditionalists and libertarians to get along with each other. Um, so that fighting can often be even more bitter. I, I, I will say one thing in defense of Will Wilkinson. Uh, <laughs> What, one of the first things I ever heard about uh, Helen uh, was that uh, Will Wilkinson was criticizing her online for saying mm -hmm. that, uh, it, Helen said, we should reject Obamacare in part because it might ameliorate and diminish suffering. And Will pointed out, in a way that I think is very fair, that this is probably going to convince most people to embrace Obamacare. I mean, don't most people want to decrease suffering? Builds character. And, and I think you'll find, <coughs> I think you'll find a lot of Helen's positions are actually guided by the desire to increase suffering. And I'm, I'm Catholic. <laughs> that might explain it. Although I don't know, you, you, you start connecting the dots, and you realize that, uh, though she sounds like an old-timey, old-fashioned Catholic moralist. She's almost always defending something that most of us would find horrific, whether it's corrupt politicians over reformers, our bar brawlers. Uh, she'll uh, defend, uh, say, Catholic moralists one moment, but defend prostitutes and bad girls the next. Uh, she says she's sort of like a libertarian, but the first thing she wants to repeal, she once said, was the law against assault, so that men get into more fist fights, or at least live under the threat of constant fist fights. <laughs> <coughs> and in, in her essay, she uh, praises the combativeness of the party of the right. And I think when, when you read that, especially if somebody's invoking Catholicism and occasional references to G.K. Chesterton, you tend to assume that between the cracks of this combative sounding worldview, there must be some underlying uh, iceberg of uh, traditional morality. Uh, but are we so sure? Could there be something much darker going on <laughs> in, in Helen's thinking? Yeah. I mean, I know that the, the gamesmanship within the party of the right has sometimes taken brutal forms that went far beyond just political sparring. Fight club? Uh, you know, you're not supposed to talk about party of the right fight club, but you know, she, <laughs> she said it, yeah. not me. Uh, like I said, fight each other. And I, I, I probably should confess that Helen and I dated for two years. So, you know, we, we, we've sparred about many things. It, it, might, it might come as a surprise to some of you that we dated for two years, not just because we have ideological differences, but because there are probably some people in this room who also dated Helen during those two years, given, <laughs> given how tumultuous things got. It was sort of on again, off again. I'm in favor of combativeness. And, so. and at times, her, her gamesmanship would even include things like coldly saying at one point that she was going to play matchmaker and set up a couple, oh, man. and then seduce the man away to play with his mind and hurt the woman, which, when you think about it, is pretty creepy, kind of disturbing. Is all this going on C-SPAN? Yeah, this is all on C-SPAN. This is. And I, for the record, I believe five months later she made good on this somewhat disturbing promise. Okay. And I doubt anyone here who knows me well really thinks I'm making this up. So I can't help wondering, when you strip away the things you don't like, like Alan what? Bloom's values and tradition, which you reject at one point explicit in the essay, what is it you don't want people to do to each other? What sort of evils are beyond the pale? 
when you're when you've encouraged a world of this sort of boxing and brawling and fighting and hurting each other in an almost sadomasochistic way. Maybe we well, should move uh, off on. The top of my I, head. I think she has the right to respond on this one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, off the top of my head, what do I think is off bounds? Uh, I don't know. Spilling your heart out on C-SPAN. <laughs> Perhaps, perhaps. No I, questions. I just think this is a darkness that can be concealed by references to tradition and G.K. Chesterton, and something maybe a little scary we need to worry about rather than just thinking it's all fun and games. The right can perhaps conceal nihilism as disturbing as the left's. Okay, so any questions about the generic ballot? To watch the program in its entirety, go to booktv.org. Simply type proud to be right at the top left of the screen and click search. And join us for next month for In-Depth when Jonah Goldberg takes your calls, emails, and tweets.